Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, April 14th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, the Determined Length, episode number 736. I don't know what's going on. I, they, I, 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 what day is it? Uh, when, when, like, how, how long do I have? What? It's, what? Mm hmm. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, the plan for this week did not come together, and I have a, I have a busy life. Um, I'll explain in a moment. I also had a have had a thing going on for this past week. So, um, anyways, getting to today, I like didn't have things formalized, and uh, so I pivoted and I was like, let's just talk about what's going on and what's going to be happening. Mm. Um, so last year, Damon, you got married. So sure did. Um, and that is considered a major life event. Yeah, uh, marriages. Divorces, oh, losing shit. a loved I'm one. I have, have to put that on my taxes, am I? <laughs> what, the Damon got married? No, the major <laughs> life of that. Never mind. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Having a child, um, being someone's caretaker, like all these things are big life events. And in a month, uh, you, Jeff, you're going to have a major life event. You're going to move. And we're not talking like, the last time where you moved from one apartment to a different apartment in the same complex. Yeah, I moved across the street. Right. You're actually moving time zones and states. So uh, we'll all be in the same time zone. And correct. I'll be a lot closer to Damon. Yeah. Not close. I'm not sure yet because I don't have an apartment lined up. Right. Um so I figured like we'd kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, just for clarification, in case anybody is wondering, I am not feeling left out on the major life event train. Um, <laughs> I already did my due diligence back in 2017, yeah. 2018 to 2019 yeah. and 2020. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Lost a job, was unemployed for a year, uh, went into a, a depression and then came out of it with a job, got another job. Landed in the pandemic. Oh, in between that, lost my mother. Um, I had a whole bunch of stuff going on, so I'm yeah. good. I don't. I don't yeah. need no more. <laughs> you also <laughs> have you hit a you hit a milestone last year, didn't you? Oh, oh, you know what, bitch? Okay, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. no. What? Mm -hmm. What? Uh huh. Am I wrong though? No, you're not. Fuck you. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so no, I was thinking about this and we were having a, a discussion and I was like, okay, I think we need to think ahead about the month of May because that's when Jeff's going to be moving and um, there's just some things kind of going on with, with stuff lining up um, mm -hmm. along those lines. So if things go to possibly the, a plan, <laughs> we won't really have much of a of an issue in terms of like the episodes um there will be some background magic and y'all as the audience won't know like what happened but in the meantime jeff will be packing moving relocating and getting uh settled by the way did you know we location. have a patreon 
<laughs> Why don't you just play that, that 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 clip again? Why don't you just do that real quick? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Why? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, that's why we're talking about the Patreon again. Anyways. It's 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 money. Well, yes, it helps pay for the the server and stuff. Um so that being said Sadly it's dedicated to a certain thing and I can't dip into it to help with the mood, so that's gonna be fun. It's okay. Um that being said though, I wanna go back and, and explain uh my past week. So on Monday, April 8th, there was a significant event that happened here in the U.S. And all three of us may have been affected by it in some fashion. And I'm talking about the solar eclipse that yes. took place. Um, I know that it came over my area. I know that it was just due west of Cincinnati. Right. Proper. Yeah. And I know that it came across Texas, but I forgot to double check, Jeff, if it came over top of Austin or not. It did. Okay. Did either of you get to see any of it? Yes. I didn't I did. bother. <laughs> <laughs> I suffered Lovely. I suffered from something I have called lack of caring. Lovely. Like That's it's a, Ooh, it's a event of nature that only happens uh, every so often. Okay. Uh, it, uh, the, well, it, it explained why it got so dark at that time of day. Right. And the temperature dropped about 10 degrees and, you know, yeah, things were different. Yes. So Cincinnati was not totally in, not in the path of totality, mm -hmm. but it was just like we said, like just east of it or west of it, however you want to think. I don't have the map in my head. Um, mm -hmm. It went over Dayton and some other areas. So I know a lot of people up there got some really great photos. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, um, we were having a our security system updated, upgraded um, on that Monday. And the guy that was our tech, um, he brought his own Eclipse glasses and... and um, he had family that was looking at it and we would literally, I mean, it's his job. I don't fucking care, but he would literally step out. Uh, we would step out onto the porch and we could look up and um, he had, we both had the glasses on and able to see it again. Like it didn't get fully um, like covered. It didn't get fully the sun from where mm -hmm. we were. It didn't get fully covered, but it was pretty, wild to see from my perspective um and i did i really enjoyed it um the astronomy nerd that i am really enjoyed it um seeing all the things that were happening and watching it like watching it happen as it happened with the glasses was kind of fun um and then seeing all the other pictures that people brought in the nasa pictures and everything it was it was amazing for me so cool. I, I admit that I did kind of see it uh, uh, through pictures that were spammed into my uh, work WhatsApp chat. Ah, uh, so I shared one of the pictures nice. with, with, with the host. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so Erie was in the path of totality where I live. My best friend of nearly 30, 30 years uh, contacted me months ago and was like, hey, I'm going to be up in your area for April 8th. And I was like, uh, okay. And I was like, that, that seems random. Like, and they were like, oh, it's, it's, it's a solar eclipse. It like comes right over top of Erie. And I was like, oh, really? Like, and I didn't think much about it. I was like, well, sure, whatever. And then work <laughs> got weird. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but our county executive decided to not shut down county government. Yet FEMA and public safety and like national guard all these people were like uh you're probably going to see your county almost double in size so like there was all this like concern about like traffic and like just mm -hmm. density and like emergency services and all this stuff so anyways um so various departments made decisions and i was given the option to work remotely from home which turned into a blessing which gets me to my point about what happened uh, with me this past week. Um, 
So over the weekend, going into the eclipse, I did not know that apparently I ingested something that has given me food poisoning. Oh. Oops. And I am still dealing with it a week later. Oh. Yeah. So let's just say my bathroom and I, in the 12 <laughs> years, like, <laughs> almost 12 years I've been living here, have become more intimately acquainted. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that sucks. I, yeah, I would yeah, not. Like, I, I've had some bouts in the past where, you, like, you think you eat something bad, but mm-hmm. this is different. This is this is much more. And I've read some things online. I've talked to my boss about it. Like, I think this is legitimately something that I can track mm. that will take some time. Like, it does mm-hmm. not quickly resolve Just itself. Go away. Yeah, get that pee you like. <laughs> get those fluids and hydrate. Oh, I know. Like, I've been drinking so much. Like, I, I, this is not to be gross or anything, but, like, I've been sick before. I've had diarrhea before. And, you know, like, half a day, whole day, like, it's uncomfortable. It's not pleasant. It's not really enjoyable. But let me tell you, when you go on 48 hours <laughs> and then 72 hours and yeah. you've heard of Montezuma's Revenge... <laughs> like and you feel like there is nothing left in your body and you're like okay like this is this is not an experience i want to have again no by any means so yeah i've been on a roller coaster this past week with um my gi tract and because of that i haven't been feeling well and then that got compounded because i haven't slept well because Sometimes in the middle of the night, you feel things and then you realize that you quickly (laughs) need to make it to the bathroom. (laughs) So you just like your life focus changes a lot when you reconsider things like for those that aren't aware in the U.S. in some bathroom stalls across the country, people take to writing things on the walls. And I don't mean just like call this number for a good time. Or, like, like check out this hole for, you know, some stress relief. There's these little ditties that people write um, in reference to when you thought that it was a fart and it wasn't. <laughs> God damn it, Jeff Perry. <laughs> so let me just say, that comes to mind when you feel like you, your body mm-hmm. and you are not on the same page. And yeah. you're just like... Really? Yeah. I just want to be normal. <laughs> like I just, want, <laughs> I just want my life to go back to like I can eat things and not second guess stuff and feel bad about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, oh. I've taken a bunch of medicine and things, and then you know, yeah, and all that. So that's been a Your thing. Uh huh. Um, I mean, I've still got you know both jobs and and other things going on, and so, anyways, um, so a lot of that was draining me no pun intended and distracting me from focusing on some stuff so uh yeah that's that's kind of been Mm. my week and but then in terms of like i was saying like looking at where we are with the show and that i was like okay we probably need to look ahead through the end of may to just better gauge yeah where we're going to be what we're going to do um in that case so that being said, do you, so Jeff, you know that you're actually officially moving on a specific day or I that's will, tentative? I will be leaving Austin on May 8th. Okay. Which is a Wednesday. Correct. <clears throat> which essentially gives me five days to get to Cincinnati. And I need to report to the office on the 13th. Hmm. Okay. So you leave on the 8th, and then you have to be to work on that Monday the 13th. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So if I don't have a place, fortunately, a couple of things could happen. Nothing has been set in stone or knowing if it's needed. But so... They have an allowance for 
temporary uh, lodging. So, okay. Uh, if I stay at a hotel, they can they can reimburse me up to a certain amount. Okay. It does happen that I know somebody in Cincinnati that mm -hmm. I'm not sure might have a guest room. Uh, or have you have have you not been listening to the? To, I was like, I was like, uh, you know that like the house is getting like stuff yeah done to it and like only has one operational bathroom in the whole place. Yeah, yeah, that's been the only unfortunate thing. Like I knew we, what was happening, and I was like, well, worst comes to worst, I'm like, well, what can we do? I'm like, well, no, we can't because we are. We are down a bathroom. We have a half upstairs and we use the one downstairs. It is the only bathroom with a working um, shower or, or, well, shower, you know, tub kind of situation. And we've been, because of what we're planning on doing, a lot of stuff that was upstairs is in the guest room. So the bed is not available and there's not a lot of room. And I'm literally looking at it right now as, and I see the boxes on the bed and all the stuff. And um, we're dealing with some other stuff, which I can also get into um, that is making it like, we have to figure out where to move things because we're going to be dealing with a, situation um that has come up that we're going to have to take care of quickly third thing is if i can uh, have an apartment that i can like remotely uh uh sign the lease for most places at least lately my mine we can sign on that uh, on an app uh and then move in that weekend or something. So, right. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll have like one night of a hotel and move into an apartment or something like that. But I need to find one that satisfies me. Right. Here, here's, so the here here's here's the things I'm looking for in an apartment for anybody who's in Cincinnati that that uh, might at least have an idea of what apartments might be available. Uh, one central AC, preferably with the laundry on site, if not in the apartment, and uh, the stove. I would like to have one which is a one of the flat top electrics, like an induction. Yeah, it, it it's you know the ones with the where the coil. I don't know. That is an electric, right. but it's underneath. It's not quite induction because induction is just a flat sheet of metal that uh, heats up. Right. Or it has some. I can't remember the physics. So, but no, but the idea. So it yeah. looks. It could look like induction, but it's not. It's just electric coil under glass. Right. I mean, gotcha. it was induction. I don't matter. I just want it. I would prefer it flat. That's something I can be flexible on. Mm -hmm. Right, and preferably cheaper than my current one. <laughs> apartment, which is thirteen hundred dollars. So, I mean, that so the upside to your move, and I'm speaking without really researching this, is Austin is one of the higher like cost bracket areas. Mm -hmm. So moving from there to another location could have some financial benefit in that it's not as expensive in terms of cost of living. Well, they do have so state they... taxes. Who does? Texas or Ohio? Ohio. Texas doesn't do state taxes? Nope. Oh, interesting. Annually, I only hmm. need to do my federal. Hmm. Well, of course, I don't know what the sales tax is here because that's usually where where they get the balance from. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that always intrigues me when a state's like, oh, we don't do state tax. And I'm like, huh? Because <laughs> I'm always like, it's just part of the nature. Like you have a federal tax, you have a state tax, you have a local tax. Like 
So when you plan things, you just kind of learn in your area, like what's on a tax table. So like in PA, clothes are not taxed. So that was been like a big benefit for a long time. I don't know if it's quite has the same benefit, but forever it seemed like people would come from out of state border areas to PA intentionally to like buy clothes, especially like for kids going back to school, stuff like that um, in that case. So and then. Like as an example, I think I might have told this in the past on the podcast years ago, I went to Philly and I knew that the state tax was six percent. And I went to Philly and I was in a store and I bought something and they charged me 7%. And, the, and I had pre-calculated when I got up to the register. It must have been even like $10. And I was like, oh, it'll be $10.60. And the woman was like, it's $10.70. And I was like, what? And she was like, it's $10.70. And I was like, I'm sorry, there must be a mistake. And she kind of looked at me and I was like, the sales tax in PA is 6% without missing a beat. God bless her. I remember this black woman looks at me and she goes, oh, honey, you in the city of brotherly love. And it's an additional 1% here. <laughs> It's seven percent. Wow! Total is ten dollars and seventy cents. Like she had no nothing for me. Like she she was nice about it, but she was like, "You wrong. Here's why you're wrong. The total is still wow. the same. Pay the bill." <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! That was my lesson that you can have a local jurisdiction tax that you know nothing about until you mm-hmm. go to pay for something, and then you're like, "What? Oh, I guess that's a thing." Yeah. So, so weird. So that being said, like going to Ohio, yeah, that would be a, a little bit of a learning curve is that you'll have state taxes. But the upside on state taxes is state taxes in most areas, from my experience, are already paid because you get taxed in the beginning. So the filing is sort of, for me, a weird thing that you do just because, like to show that, yes, like that's already done, like it's already taken out in, in your – if if it's a, a what I consider it a standard employer, they will take it out of your paycheck automatically. Mm. Yeah. So you just have to basically show that they took the money out, and it calculates to the amount it's supposed to be. So there's no difference. You owe nothing. They owe you nothing. It's weird. Anyways. Yeah. There's no deductions on state taxes. Hmm. Well. Damon, I've been watching your face. So you, you, I think you've been searching or researching. Yeah, I've been looking at just some of our apartment complexes, um, just trying to get an idea for things. I do think you might be able to find something. Um, oh, with some of your requests, larger facilities. I found at least twenty on apartments.com. Um, but some of these are in weird places. Where the hell are you? Oh no, we're not. You're not working. You're I not have to there. ignore. I, I feel like you have to look at anything that's within any review that's on there within the past year. Because yeah, sometimes that, there's something that's like five years old, and it's like I can ignore that that review, which is one star, because there's a five star that was within, and then there's like two reviews or something like that. Interesting. So I'm looking at a, another one, and I'm kind of like, this is a weird place. Don't mind me. So that's what I've been doing. I just really quickly just looked at some apartments. There's one here. Where the fuck are you? I think you're near where I used to live. Yeah, not that far. So anyway, I've even been looking at virtual tours and it's like, I can't really understand this apartment. (laughs) Like, I like some, Um, I I think it's more of like, how big is that really? (laughs) Well, I think what bothers me is like a friend of mine, my best friend actually just recently moved um, into their own place. And they actually seem to land in a really decent apartment building complex. What's intriguing to me is it's an old school that was built like a century ago Mm. and then was eventually closed and then it was converted into apartments. So the building structure is pretty sound. And the, the thing that I just found out from the recent visit was that like sound doesn't travel like in a modern day apartment. 
because hmm. of the walls and the construction, they said, I'm in my apartment. I hear nothing. I'm in the hallway. Or if I have my front door open, I can sort of hear my neighbors. But it's not like what you think of a modern day construction where like you hear damn near everything happening around you. Um, which I've kind of heard. Like it, that's part of the thing about like the townhouse that I'm in on the end. I only have one neighbor. And I'm sure we hear things from each other's respective like homes. The thing is they're mirror images of each other. So the stairs are right on the other side of each other's wall. So we're always mm -hmm. hearing without a doubt us going up and down the stairs. And that's about it. Like we don't really hear much from each other. Once in a while I might hear some like sound of their sound system, but they don't necessarily have a, a loud sound system. I try to keep mine like to a low roar <laughs> if anything. Um, you know, but I mean, those are things that you'll kind of find um, mm -hmm. to be standard for that. I mean, I think if anything, the biggest benefit the demon will be to you is he will be able to tell you which ones are absolutely no. <laughs> like he was just mentioning yeah. a ago. He was like, where are you? And he was like, oh, no, no. Nope, yeah, not, that's not a thing. <laughs> it might work. There was I thought it was closer to the one I was kind of oh knowing. I thought it was closer to um, UC, University of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And that area is just, I, I don't, I personally, unless I was a student, would not want to live anywhere near the campus other than like it's, it's sort of centri centrally located. Um, but having been having been going to rehearsals all weekend and traveling there like on a Friday night, um, it was it's it's a lot. It's always a lot. And um there are some areas where I just I wouldn't you're gonna be in these small little streets and they're just it yeah. And people walking everywhere and people don't know how to fucking pay attention to shit. It just it bothers me. But yeah. Um, one of the things, so we're talking about life and updates and things. Um, uh, so strap it, everybody. When you own an old house, <laughs> you find things. You get old people problems? No, no, not necessarily. No, but you, you find things out that are going to be potential like money sinks, money sinks. Um, so back in March, I think Jim and I went to a home and garden show and we went around and we, you know, we were looking for some, a couple of things and um, we did find something. One of the things, the big things that we're going to do is um, we've been talking about the bathroom upstairs. We are actually going to get it um, renovated. Mm -hmm. um, going to, there's a, and we found a guy that is able to do some of the um, big work, like con contracting work. He'll be able to, because the floor and the the reason we've not been using the bathroom upstairs is because there's a there was a leak um, that has caused some of the flooring in in front of the shower to sag. So he is going to fix that and then replace the shower and all of the stuff and do some things and it's going to be wonderful and he's able to do it and it's it's going to be a lot of money that's the big problem um uh while we we're walking around we ran into these people uh, this company that does um duct cleaning and you're like if you sign up now you can get one for like two hundred dollars or something like that i can't remember the exact price uh, so it's relatively inexpensive we're like perfect that sounds great we've been thinking about doing it because we hadn't had it done in the eight years that we've lived here and we don't know when it had ever been done beforehand so they came and the guy showed up it was a saturday he came in he came downstairs um started looking at the the hvac unit and then he called me downstairs he's like i can't do um the deck cleaning and i said well why and he goes oh well and he pointed some, some stuff on the ducks, and that's asbestos. So, 
um, okay. they're there and the way that they do their cleaning, they do a thing that whips around and the thing that whips around could hit the asbestos, which would cause it to break and has the potential to cause issues. So, right. so we can't do it that until we get that taken care of. So finally, they referred us to a company. We called the company. They showed up actually this week. Um, and um, they have something that will allow it to pass through an infection. It, he, he, it, he didn't even take five seconds. He looked at it and he was like, yeah, that's his stuff. So um, they have something that can clear it up and make it, you know, doable for things. Um, there's really nothing else you can do with beyond the tens of thousands of dollars to replace it which is a big deal mm -hmm. so we're not doing that um so this one is a much less expensive option but it is something we have to get done and i would like to get it done um when we had the um pipe burst last well, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before last, um, there was concerns about um, the plaster in our bathroom and in the garage potentially being asbestos. So that wasn't. And I was hopeful that there wasn't going to be any in the house. Well, no. So mm. it's unfortunate. It's a thing that happens, but it's um, that and some other things that have been going on are going to be some cost um costly and life updates as we're talking about in this episode that's kind of the sucky thing um we are we are going to do our, our honeymoon like that is one thing we, we we've got the money set aside to do that we're not going to worry about that um that's going to happen Probably in September. So as we're going through updates in the future, that's something I'll probably put on the calendar once we set those dates down. So my question for you, Damon, is because um, asbestos ain't no joke. No. Asbestos can be safe? Question mark. From my understanding, yes. if it's sealed, like yes, and if it's in a, like a non-volatile state, I don't know how else to phrase that. Yeah, but it's only That's once the, it gets disturbed then it becomes the problem, and it's the removal and, is the key. Like, yeah, and that. that's the plan is to seal it essentially, um, which could be. He 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 quoted us at with what we had at fourteen to seventeen hundred dollars, um, okay. which is not terrible, but that was he him going off, um just his mind. He didn't go in and put all the figures and everything into a computer to make the, we're, hopefully we'll get that on Monday um, and we'll determine from there. But ultimately something has to be done because um, not that we, I plan on ever selling this house, but once you know, you know, and that's the big issue. Once you know, you kind of have to take care of it. So, right. No, that makes sense. Yeah, but, you know, um, good things that are happening, random aside, um, uh, I am planning to go, I think I've talked about this, I'm planning to go to IML um, next month, um, barring any unforeseen circumstances, that is the plan, the flight has been paid for, the Hotel obviously hasn't, but hotel has been booked. Um, I was going to buy, since I got my uh, refund, uh, I was going to buy the um, tickets, ticket, I should say, for the event. And then sort of go from there. Um, it's been, It's going to be interesting, I think. I feel... I'm looking forward to it. I've never been. I've been to Chicago, but I've never been to mm -hmm. IML. I've seen many friends that have competed. Um, 
I've seen just virtually things that have been going on. I've watched from afar, but I have never at a, as a leather person gone. And this will be a first for me. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, you'll be the first of the three of us to go. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> So I'll be intrigued to hear afterwards what your experience is like. Yes. Although to be fair, I've seen a fair amount of like videos and postings and yeah. that stuff. So I mean, I I kind of get a feel for things. Um, I believe I don't know for certain. Outside of oh, I forgot the name of it. Is it Darkfest, the one that's in Germany? Hmm. Um, outside yeah. of that one, I think IML might be one of the largest leather vendor marts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like to me, it's kind of one of the reasons I would want to go. Um, but I would have to like go without a checkbook or any damn credit card or <laughs> like, cause I know me, I'd be walking around and be like, Ooh, I like that. And I like that. And that'd be fun. Yeah. Da, da, da. And then, you know, I would have no retirement savings left or anything. Cause you know, you just like buy all the cow anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm having, I, I have been trying to decide what I'm going to do packing wise. Um, cause I'm flying Southwest and I could check two bags for free. And I can bring mm-hmm. a carry on. So I've been thinking, and this is me, I'm literally probably going to check a a bag with essentials, my, my things, and then bring a bag that is carry, no, not carry, check a bag that is mostly empty. Because I feel like I'm going to be getting stuff and so, I need to <laughs> if you get them if you get one that's smaller than the other you could put the empty one inside the bigger one true if you can figure out how to make that work and then that way when you return you have two bags um just be careful on the weight mm-hmm. that's the, yeah that's the thing I'm worried about because leather is heavy, y'all. Like, leather is heavy. Yes, it is. <laughs> it could be very easily over the 50-pound limit or whatever it is. Yep. I'm not, that's the only thing I'm not looking, that's really looking forward to is trying to figure out how to get everything. Because I packed for NAB back in February, and I brought some things, and I got some more. Um, but I was driving. That was a two-hour drive. No mm-hmm. flight. It doesn't matter how much your 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 <laughs> suitcase weighs when you're driving, right? So, no, that makes sense. Anywho, um, in addition to that, I was thinking ahead. Um, I know that I'm going to be away in August. Mm-hmm. Um, the union that I became president of, the International Conference, is every four years, and it happens to be this summer. Um, so there will be a Sunday. I think it'll be just one Sunday I'm affected because I think the, sorry, I called a conference, the convention, I think is Monday through Thursday mm. and I have to fly out to the West coast on Sunday ahead of like when things start. So in theory, I should be back the following weekend. Mm. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, whether we like do some stuff in terms of like recording and, and things like that. Yeah. But, um, and later this year, we have a milestone as a podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. What is it? I... Do you need me to really tell you? Yes, you do. Well, I, I'm giving a hint if you haven't noticed. I see. I'm seeing a number. Yes. But. Yes. Seven. Two. Five. Are we saying 25? No. <laughs> seven. Five plus two is seven. What is it? <laughs> this is episode 736. Okay. Are we talking 800? No. Before you get to 800, the- you're going to hit 750. 750. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, and we if I'm doing my math right, that. we kind of hit the, didn't we hit the 25th anniversary? What? No, I'm doing my math wrong. Yeah, you are. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's you a, are. The 16 year anniversary was in January. I don't know why you added another nine years. Like, oh, because it was 2008 and I'm doing my math wrong. Right. Ah, uh, right, right. Never mind. Correct. Ignore me. I was That's why I was like, time. what are you talking about? I was like, listen, I've been on this podcast for a long time, but we ain't getting nowhere near 20 years yet. <laughs> I'm an online. But later, you. later this summer, we will hit 750 episodes. So think ahead if there's anything um, that we would do for that. Because um, I don't know many podcasts that are at that level. Right. And I, I'm going to go out podcasts, on the podcast, right? Well, I was just going to say, I want to say that we, we surpassed them. So I think the longest ring was Bear Podcast, right? Correct. And they made it to 600. So we are beyond them. And thank you, Nard and Ray, for keeping your website up and running. <laughs> because I use it every time we talk about them. Um, but yeah, they, um, they made it to 600. And then they did an offshoot for a little while. Um, and I can't remember what it was called, but yeah. So they ran about 10 years, I want to say, or so. Which makes, yeah, that makes yeah. about sense. They basically did pivot away from the bear theme to more of their nerdy theme. Yeah. So, um, but that being said, I have some potential interview shows coming up. I'm sort of excited about, um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I've been in contact with Ed. Um, we're still looking at, at stuff, but he probably, for him, won't be back for a little while. I know that he had another show. So he did chess a little while ago. And mm -hmm. then there was another show that I think he's going to be doing. And I can't remember. I actually sent him a message. And I was like, weren't you going to be in another show? I couldn't remember what it was. Chess? If it had... so... been one night in Bangkok? Yeah. Yes. He was in chess. Yeah. Yeah. He was part of the chorus for that. It was an oriental city that he didn't know <laughs> what the city was getting. Wow. And he had, it, and he had to do choreo. The festival was in the show with everything, but you'll bring her. Huh. You should probably reach out to him, Jeff, and be like. Look, the, the, only re the only reason why I know that is because uh, I don't know if it was the guy who wrote the song. Um, But. Uh, it was a popular in the 80s and my brother bought the soundtrack for it and I was listening to it and I'm like, oh, I like that song. Correct. Um, it was, the music was by Benny Anderson and Bjorn Ulvias of the group ABBA. Lyrics were ah. by Ulvias and Tim Rice. Tim Rice as in Andrew Lloyd Webber's partner of musicals. Yeah, and it came out in 84. And... One Night in Bangkok is like one of the most famous songs that yes, came out of that. Yes. I think it got out hmm. of pop charts at one point. Though. It did. It absolutely did. Um, to much uh, reception. I think that's really the only song that really kind of came out of that. Um, uh. That was like super, super well known. Yeah, because Murray Head is the did one night in Bangkok. That's it. Wow. And I just distract Damon with the fact that I you got sure distracted to fuck, you sure after did. I got distracted. Yes. What? Yes. I think, he's, I think the, he sent me. He sent me. A, he sent me a anyway. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. I'm checking yeah. it out. So for those yeah. that don't know what the secrecy is, Jeff sent a link about a, an apartment complex in Cincy. Um, I've never heard of it. Not that I'm a Cincy aficionado by any means, but, yeah. you know. Uh, I haven't either. As a property management group, open layout. Of course, this is the thing I will say. The, the the magic they do with photography for apartments, <laughs> baby, they make things look so a certain way. And then in reality, you're like, oh, okay, it's not quite right what you thought. 
Not that I'm saying yeah. it's all trickery, but you know. Yeah. Um, we can talk after the show. Yeah. But I, um, just, I just saw it and I'm like, hmm. Your, we'll talk after the show. I don't want to. I don't want to get into it now because we're literally in a show. But Ooh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the I like the the two bedroom one and a half bath with the built in laundry like dual unit mm. stack like washer dryer deal. To me, that's appealing as a single person who act, who goes to the laundromat all the time. Yes, I've lived here all this time and I've never gotten a washer dryer um, installed, but you know, ooh, two and a, two bed one and a half bathroom is a little pricey, probably. But, but the two bedroom one and a half price range. Is it? But I, I was actually just even looking at just the one. Yeah. One bed, I mean, one that, bath. That's kind of what it comes down to is, is like, you know, what are you? And I'm just going to say this for the record, because I would say this to anybody when they're going to make a major life change. Like you're going to change your job. Or you're going to change your like your residential stuff. It's not permanent. You can make a change. Like, so you can go into a one year lease for an apartment mm-hmm. And six months into it, be like, I'm not feeling it, and then start planning appropriately to shift again. Does anybody want to move multiple times? Hell no. Um, unless you came up like with that kind of existence mm-hmm. in your a life, then you know, I get it. But yeah. Oh, thank God there's floor plans. All right. So this is the thing I was gonna say <laughs> earlier that's my beef about apartment places, is they don't put floor plans in and they're like, Oh, it's a one and a half bedroom or blah blah blah. And you're like, the fuck is the layout? Like, I would like to see. And understand when I walk in the front door, what's to my left, what's to my right, what's to my front. Like, how do you move around the space? So, are you sharing it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you I don't think you're sharing it to the stream, though. No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> that's what I, I like, thought. The... David Benny was like, yeah, I, I thought that's what he was doing, showing everybody the the virtual tour of the place. Because, like, I mean, this is the one downside, but I, I can work with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it looks good. Um, it, since we're talking about it, might as well talk, talk about it. Um, you're in, it looks like Springdale, yep. um, which is a little north of the city. Um, it's that's actually Springdale's where. Yes, that's what I was going to get to. Um, uh, you're actually not that far from where, I, where my office, my work offices are. Um, uh just a little bit further down, actually at the next exit, um, near where the apartments are, the apartment is, off of 275 is my, um, how I get to work, um, if I ever go into the office, which doesn't happen as much anymore. But, when but the, anywho. One of the things I like is the, this, the big living space. It's, yeah. It's just um, this one big long corridor, essentially, that's connected well, that's, to the yeah. kitchen and the... Uh, Bedroom, bath. bedroom, bathroom. Well, yeah. that's the thing I was going to say to you, Jeff. Is so the upside is is that that long space has the ability to be kind of zoned. So like you could mm-hmm. create like your home office area mm-hmm. plus a separate entertainment like area. And it looks like there was a um, a little balcony patio potentially too, which I think is nice. Maybe yeah. Well, it's kind of next to the front door. It looks like. So that might be kind of like um, someone I know in Columbus, their townhouse uh, that they used to live in had front oh, no. and back door entrances, which I found interesting. And the back had a little patio area. The front yeah, that's not, kind of what but... it's looking like here. If I'm looking at this floor pan, right? Yeah, but the virtual tour doesn't quite match. But yeah, there's probably a patio right here. So... Yeah, I think the two bedrooms show but this you come is, in the front. This is front. just the uh, uh, demonstration. One bedroom. So we don't know. If oh this, no, 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 no. We're right. There's a big unit is is going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're but... correct. So at the end of the living room, there's a patio balcony area. So it kind of looks like. I don't know if you can come in and out that way. I think you might come. That's in the and out only the entrance that I'm seeing. Is. Right here it has a locks and stuff. The whole locks. So if you turn around 180 to the other end, go all the way 
down. That's a closet. No door. Oh, this doesn't map match the floor plan yeah, that they have on. There might be other units that are essentially the similar floor plan, but they have a door over here or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. But it, I just realized seem... I've been talking this whole time and you didn't see me. So. <laughs> Sorry, Damon. Wow. Anywho. But um, I mean, I, so... I, I will say this. For me, this is very appealing. I like the concept of, like, it's kind of like a house. Mm-hmm. Like that's what the, that's why I like where I live. It's a townhouse. Like it's not an apartment that I'm above or below somebody. Like I'm beside. And again, I lucked out that I got an end unit, so I only have one neighbor. Yeah. And I was, as I was saying, in about the you're you're in like northern north of the city. You're near a lot of good places. Um, Two seventy five is essentially the um, outer loop. The inner outer loop of of the the city well not the city but like the area and it can get you practically everywhere um we take 74 to 275 oh and there's a crummer nearby yeah there's stuff there's plenty of places mm-hmm. nearby there's like um if you go further up springfield springfield pike You'll see places. Um, there's like a movie theater. Um, where did you go? Isn't there? Yeah. Little market. Oh, Jeff, if you go to, if you end up in Springdale, you are miles away from the world famous Jungle Gyms International Market. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say you've got like this is a good this is a good one. Um I don't know the the apartment complex specifically, but yeah. the location is decent. You're not close to down. You're not like city limit proper, but you know. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I said, I'm just saying and you're probably at least I think thirty ish minutes from work. Um, come here, Hugh. I mean, Direction. As long as I can get to two seventy five, at least from the people that we talk to, who work at our work. Um, yeah. Twenty thirty minutes. To, yeah. As long as you can get to two seventy five. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like 275 for you, Jeff, is. Hang on. <laughs> I just go on Springfield Pike and boom, there it is. Right. I was going to say it's like it's like it's minutes away. Yeah, Probably it's minutes. four miles like from this complex. It's so yeah. close. Yeah. And the upside is there are two main ways to get onto 275 so there's a route for and then there's a congress avenue both of them have major like on off ramps to get onto 275 oh there's a sam's club there's dave and busters oh yeah um oh get back over here um yeah you, you're in a, like i said you're in a pretty decent spot i just i would just say there's a lot of stuff around here oh, that man, would be a pretty decent call. spot yeah, give them a call. Go I from just there. noticed that the area code, at least on this one, is like one digit off from my current area code. Is it? Yeah, it's 513, our area code here. Mm-hmm. And 512. Ah, that's not going to be confusing. Well, the nice <laughs> thing is, is. Uh... The nice thing about phones nowadays, here's the thing about True. evolving. I'm going to stop sharing. Everything evolving the way it has in technology. Your The phone number area codes really kind of don't matter anymore. So yeah. very true. Long distance. What's that? Mm. It's true, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I mean, I used to train on singular wireless if y'all remember that back in the day oh god 
and we had to, to like I had to explain like about text messaging and MS or MMS is it MSM um, and like you know just like plain text versus picture text or video texting and like times so like between the nine to nine windows or six to six windows or whatever it was like and how like after hours like you got like free but during the day you got minutes I mean just all sorts of crap like that um, so yeah like like long distance was a big deal because it was like was that included in your package or not and if it was like you know how did you use it so the reason i put that in the chat just so you know jeff is here's the thing though if they're if they do deals like that that might help mm -hmm. and the upside is if you were to get it done within the week like you just bought yourself time Mm -hmm. Also, and the I reason... just mean like, like, hey, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to make it into town by the 10th. Can I, can I move in on the 10th? Right, right. Mm. That, that's the only thing I was thinking about is like with you moving with your current situation, like not that in, you can't move in mid month. Like, I mean, my lease just can't, is up for renewal. Um, it'll be about the same time as when you're moving in and like, what I wanted was so I paid for how did I'm trying to remember how I did this when I first moved in. I didn't need to be moved in until mid month, but I paid for the whole month on purpose so that I bought myself like a week or two to like paint and like do some things and slowly move in and not be in a big rush and all that jazz. Um, because I needed to be in place by mid May because of the work situation that was changing. They were closing our facility and moving us to work from home or remote. Um, which is ironic how so many people do that now, but back then it was like not that popular. And so I needed to be able to have a place to move into, to be ready. And so that's what I wanted. And I like signed everything and, and paid ahead in April and, um, I was just like remembering how I was kind of annoyed because then when my lease came up, it was like for the whole month, not to the day that I was going to be moving in or whatever. Anyways, long story short, I would say for you, like just like keep that in mind, like whether or not that's a, an option, like if you can have it available when you arrive as opposed to waiting. Yeah, but yeah, if anything, I can have it lined up and be like, okay, I'll hang out in a hotel for a few days well, until I can get in or something like that. But the hopes and who knows, maybe they'd be like, hey, we'll figure it out once they get in town. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, sure. uh, if I leave like right away on, and this is one of the things I've been looking into is like, it's almost a 17 hour trip from Austin to Cincinnati. Mm. So I'm definitely going to be stopping on the way. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, so it's trying to figure out like, where's the best stops? Or where should I, should I stop? Should I try to push as far as I can the first day or go a certain length? I mean, you've got a lot bigger of day options. On the day and do, should I do a three day or should I try to do a two day and do like nine, eight hour stints or something like that? So that's kind of one of my things I need to figure out. Because I kind um, of be like, like if I don't have a place, uh, I kind of want to get to a place because uh, I'm not a fan of driving, and especially when you don't have cruise control. I was trying to figure out like a like a, a three section stint that there wasn't a long haul anywhere, but hmm. so keep it around eight hours or less each day. Say twelve hundred. I don't want to do like a, a eight hour then a five hour and a four hour. <laughs> yeah, right. That's just weird. Well, so if you if you round it and say it's twelve hundred miles and you round it to sixty miles per hour, that's twenty hours. And that's just like 
rough estimates. Yeah, and you could easily based, divide that. I'm doing this based off of like a Google Maps. Right. Right. Well, but here's the thing is, I'm like, you're going to have traffic. You're going to have potty breaks. Mm. You're going to go through a drive through at least to get food. Um, maybe I'll stop. Pro I'll probably, it, it, when I get food, I'm probably going to stop. And even if it's like a McDonald's or something, I'm probably mm -hmm. just going to eat right there. Right. Right. So that's why I'm like, it'll take you a little bit longer. So it, what it really comes down to is like, do you want to do like two 10 plus hour days or do you want to do like divided into three? Which, right. to be fair, if you make it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, that's like seven hours a day ish. That's like a work day, you know, like say eight hours maybe with the potty breaks and the gas stops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. To me, that kind of seems like you could probably make it into Arkansas and then depending on which path you go, sort of like over maybe towards Nashville and then up or. 16 hours 35 minutes per google maps because it the route it's taking me is from is uh up to dfw mm -hmm. uh through little rock memphis nashville louisville did i pronounce that right mm -hmm. okay. yes um and then up to cincinnati which i didn't realize cincinnati was like right on the kentucky border Yes. Like literally yep. on the Kentucky border. Like yep. here's the thing. People that live in Cincinnati work in Kentucky. They cross yeah. the bridge over to Freeport. Like one Newport. of my very best friends. Sorry, Newport. I call it Freeport. I don't know. Probably because I think of cigarettes. Um, which actually doesn't make any sense because it's the same name. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not yeah. feeling well, y'all. Anyways. It's okay. Um so yeah, no, it's like the thing about Cincinnati that always cracks me up is like it's a tri it's like Erie. It's a tri-state area. Mm -hmm. So like Erie is directly between New York and Ohio. So we've got the three states right along the lake. And it's not the same thing, but Cincinnati is right next is the corner of Ohio, which is next to Indiana and Kentucky. Yep. Tri-state is very, very much a thing here. You will learn quickly, Jeff, as you come here. Tri-state is something that is said often. Um and um, C and K Y, Cincinnati, North of Kentucky. Like the airport, the Cincinnati, um, Cincinnati, North of Kentucky International Airport, um, CVG, is is in Kentucky. It's um, I can't remember what city it's in. But anyway, it looks like it's near Hebron, 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 Hebron. Yeah, okay, that's about it. That sounds about right. So again, um, it we're close enough to like that's one one of the one of the reasons I moved one of the reasons I moved here like all those years ago. Um, it was away from home, but it wasn't away like too far away from home. Right, I am two hours from home, less than that technically, really, um, and. You're also kind of somewhat centrally-ish located. You can get to um, Chicago in six hours. You can get to Indianapolis in two hours. You can get to Columbus in two hours. Louisville, Lexington. Um, yeah, all the important <laughs> spots I can't get to is that. Well, actually, Minneapolis might not be too bad. Minneapolis, yeah, Minneapolis is about also... 10 and a half hours. It's, yeah. it's doable in a day. It's yeah. not great in a day, but doable. Well, right. no, I mean, this is like I said, you know, um, I, I said to Drew years ago when he was going to be moving, you know, to Orlando from Ohio and his family's in Michigan. Like we kind of talked about this very issue. And I said, if something were to happen and you had to quickly get home, Orlando is a major airline hub. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you should at least theoretically be able to get a flight. Yeah. It won't be that cheap, but you'll be able to get a flight from Orlando up to like Chicago or something like, you know, like, so it's not like you have to, you would have to drive and then, you know, take a day and a half to get home or something like that. Like you could, and I only brought that up because, you know, as we age and our parents get older, there is a thing about like, you know, being within relative distance, you know, you don't have to be next door or nothing. So to your point, like if you're going back to Minneapolis, like, 
well, knowing that it's like about an 11 hour drive, you know that you could do that if necessary or if need be, which kind of helps. Like if you decide for some reason, not for some reason, but decide to go home for the holiday or, you know, for like a brief two day stint because you're older and we only have so much capacity for family. Um, <laughs> so like, you know, you could kind of plan to be like, oh, okay, I could do an extended weekend or something, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Huh. But yeah. All the things. Thank and you. We will let... thank, thank you listeners for listening to us planning on my, my group to, <laughs> to Cincinnati. <laughs> Uh, with that, I think it, I think it's time. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anybody want to do the thing because I don't feel like doing. I can do it. I, have, I don't think I've ever done it. So. I was just gonna say, David. David's gotta like no longer be a virgin on this one. He can do. This <laughs> I mean, he's 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 helping you out on that other show. So. Yeah. So, um, here we go. There are plenty of ways to contact us. Um, you can check out our website at CubsOutloud.com. You can send us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. Or you can um, leave us a message. Um, you can call us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Um, Cubs Out Loud is pretty much anywhere you can find. You just um, put in Cubs Out Loud, no spaces, and you should be able to find us like on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, join our entourage chat at Telegram on Telegram, which is at bit.ly slash Telegram hyphen col um you can sign up for our google calendar at bit.ly slash calendar hyphen col dash col gosh i was saying hyphen i'm not used to that anyway um to support us we've got merch you can buy shirts like this our mugs our not mugs our soup bowls or whatever you can buy that at zazzle.com slash comes out loud um, some of the designs, I don't think any of the ones that we're wearing, no, the one that, um, Jeff, Jeff is wearing, um, came, we're done by Smashy. Um, you can support Smashy at T pub on T public at www.tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the bear. Um, you can subscribe as a patron patrons. You can help us keep the lights running here. Patreon.com slash cubs out loud. Or just drop us a little donation, give us a little bling bling. Um, PayPal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Help us promote, give us a like and subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, on YouTube. Like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Ding. Jeff, where can they find you? Find me anywhere on the internet. It's box set, box, puppy box, cub box, stuff three other. Uh, Gary. Uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gary Bear73. And back to Damon. Where would they find you? <laughs> if you wish to you get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E T. Woo! Lola. T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most of their related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is not safe for work. You can find me as Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. That's not safe for work. If you want the safe for work stuff, you can find me as DMA Gamer 79 on. TikTok or Twitter. And with that, take it on, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>